Hey guys, John Thomas here, and we are going to be doing some dream interpretation this week. So hopefully those of you that were on last week, we were doing some teaching. I know a couple people were asking when we were going to interpret dreams. You're able to get back on. If you are getting on, make sure to let somebody else know that might be interested in dream interpretation, that we're going to be doing some dream interpretation live for the next probably 30 minutes or so. And we'd love to have some more people join us. As you're hopping on, go ahead and let us know where you're coming from. And um, let's see. Lee Yahweh is hoping that they'll get their dream interpreted. Put it in right now. Let's see. I'll be looking for that interpretation since you're asking while I'm for that dream, while I'm looking at some of these comments. So we've got Toronto that's in. We've got Iowa that's here. Um, Ontario, Canada, welcome. Glad to have you on. We've got North Carolina. We've got the Philippines. Welcome. Phoenix, Arizona. Amazing. Let's see. Um, we've got England. We've got New Mexico. We've got Plano, Texas. I think I knew where you were coming from. Welcome. <laughs> Glad to have you on, Kristen. Um, let's see. Washington State. We've got Wisconsin. Um, New York City, Maryland. We've got people from all over. All right. Well, let's see. I'm going to start looking for some dreams and we'll, we'll see who we can get to. And here it is. So good timing. You asked early. So that, that helped out. Wonderful. So here's your dream. I had a dream that a man needed a cup. No one else had a cup except me. So I went and gave him my cup. No one else had a cup and it seemed urgent. I saw the same man in handcuffs in another dream. So the idea of a cup, I mean, one of the questions is, was there anything in the cup? And it's not going to completely change it if there was or if there wasn't. But my, my first thought when I hear the word cup. I, I'm always looking for some biblical precedence for what an element might mean. And so, you know, thinking through some biblical stories, you have Jesus saying, if you give even a cup of cold water to one of these in my name, you will not lose your reward. And this idea that if we've done it to the least of these, that we've done it unto him. And I think what you're seeing is that your um, your, your willingness to serve other people is, is actually pleasing to the Lord. It says you saw the same man in handcuffs in another dream. Now, one question is if you actually know this person in waking life. From the way that you're sharing this, it seems like maybe this is not somebody that you actually know in waking life. And so that that's the interpretation I'm going. So if that's different, it might have something to do with that person or maybe something that they represent. But it seems to be that principle that Jesus taught us that if you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. So if you visit him in prison, then you visited Jesus in prison. And, and this idea that, that separation, people that actually have real faith that are serving the people around them versus the people that say that they have faith that don't serve the people around them. Lord, Lord, when did we see you in prison and, and not come visit you? When did we see you hungry and not give you something to eat? And, and you're seeing how your service to the least of these is actually a service to the Lord. And, and you, you have capacity to help, to give a portion to somebody else that, that is in need. So, um, yeah, I'm just seeing if there's something else to add into there. And I don't have something else to add into that. So that's welcome. And you're from Nigeria. Welcome. Glad to have you on. Let's see. We've got Dublin, Ireland, Jersey, yeah, Mexico, Massachusetts. Amazing. Now let's pull up another dream. Um, is that Cheek or Chike Ubaka? A boy named David needed help. I help him. And after that, my pastor came and said, I'm the true tribe of Judah and lifted my hands in front of the church congregation. It was as if he anointed me. So this place of David it is. Hmm. 
just just thinking really quick on what David might represent. <clears throat> And, and because you've got the, you know, the true tribe of Judah, you know, the, this thing of David is, um, you know, helping out somebody that is, is it somebody that's in worship? You know, because I'm, I'm trying to think of things that David could represent. You you have the idea of David um, representing worship. That That's one piece. He wrote many of the Psalms, but he, he was also a, a prophetic person that, that helped a nation. So there was leadership, kingship. So there's there's something about leadership that is recognizing, but you also have the idea that David, when he was a boy, he was not recognized, right? He, he was left out with the sheep. You know, everybody else got invited to the feast that Samuel threw together, but he didn't even get invited. Nobody thought that he was the one that was going to be chosen. And so it seems to be saying that your ability to recognize those that other people overlook is, is something that's key that's going to allow you to be promoted spiritually. And not necessarily that your actual pastor is going to be recognizing this, but God is going to be recognizing this. And as you recognize the anointing on those that others have overlooked and you give them the help that they need, that that's actually going to bring favor into your life. So that is a good thing. Let's see. Tanya in Canada, you put up this. <clears throat> I was standing in a place and a man seemed to give me a clue. He said, it's 700 miles from here. And I thought a while and suddenly I said, is it Tennessee? And he smiled as if to say, yes, I woke up then. That man is a minister that I don't follow or know, but he does live in Tennessee upon looking into it. So, so this is interesting because it, it doesn't say what the clue is for. I mean, the, the meaning of the dream is, is decently straightforward, right? There's, there's something about Tennessee. Um, there's something for you to pay attention to in Tennessee. But what is it talking about? Is, is there a message in Tennessee that you need to pay attention to? Maybe it's somebody that's in Tennessee that has a message. Um And it seems like there's going to be a journey for you to discover that. I, I wonder if this person that you saw in, in the dream, you, you were able to look them up uh, and found out that they were in Tennessee, if they were a prophetic person. If so, this that would give a little bit more of a clue that there's something about a prophetic message for you that's being communicated in this. Um, I, I would start to pay attention to things going on in Tennessee, specifically spiritual things, specifically prophetic things, and start looking for there's something going on in Tennessee that you're supposed to, to recognize that, that there's going to be some benefit to you by recognizing it, and God's drawing your attention to it. So that 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 would be the first step. This is only one part of a conversation. There, there's there's not a lot of clarity just in this because it doesn't say what it is. It doesn't say what you're supposed to do with it. So there will be other things that the Lord is going to say that will, will kind of pull in those other pieces. But as you start looking and start paying attention, and it's very interesting that it's 700 miles. You know, one, one of the other curiosities is, is Tennessee actually around 700 miles from where you're at? If it's not, then there's a little bit more of a metaphor to the 700 miles. And, you know, because seven is often the number of perfection and completion. If there's a natural meaning to it, in general, you, you're, it's not as much on the, the metaphoric piece because in the natural world, it's actually 700 miles and it's connected. But if it's not, then all of a sudden it's like there's a highlighter on that, that there's something that needs to be completed, something that that's going to come to maturity. And that might give you a little bit more of a clue as to what it is that you're looking for in Tennessee, something that gets completed or something that comes to a place of maturity. So probably something that's already going on in your life, but you're waiting for more to happen. Very fun. Okay. <clears throat> Christianos said, I had a dream that I had to turn in my tenor saxophone 
And the notification said to turn it in on August 30th. And I knew I also had court on that day. And this was my last day at work. I knew the, I'm not sure if there was more that was going to be put on there, but that, that's the piece that we've got. So the idea of tenor saxophone, it, um, the way in, that you're saying that, it almost seems like that is actually something like you, you actually have a tenor saxophone. If you don't have a tenor saxophone, then, you know, that would have a, a slightly different meaning, not completely different, but it, it might give you a little bit more nuance as to what the saxophone might mean. Is, is this a hobby? Is this a passion? Is this something that, you know, do you, do you own your tenor saxophone in waking life, but in the dream, you, you're, you're just borrowing it and you have to turn it back in. Is it saying that there's a season ending? There's something about music and whether that is natural music or whether that there's something about a certain sound that you've identified with, the season for that sound is coming to an end. Now, August 30th just happens to be the end of the month that we're in. If you had that dream this month, it's just it's saying that it's very quick, that this season is almost over. And a sound that you've been and it sounds seems like there's there's a producing of that sound. And, and, you know, maybe it's a part of a sound because it's one instrument. I mean, saxophones do do solos. But most of the time, saxophones are in bands and there's other pieces. They may have a primary piece. They may have a secondary piece, but it's part of a bigger picture. And so that also gives you some understanding as to what it is. Um, and so court on that day, but also your last day at work. So these are all about season endings. And, and court, if there is... In waking life, you're actually going to have court on that day and your job is actually ending on that day. Now that changes it significantly, but all three of these things all happening on that day, there's some of this, it seems like there's a little bit more metaphor. So if you don't in waking life have court on that day, this is talking about a judgment. And a judgment is not always bad. Sometimes you go to, to court and you get a judgment against you, but sometimes you go to court and you get a judgment for you. This doesn't say either one. It says that a season is ending and there's a judgment that's coming. And so this is an expectation of a season change so that you can start to prepare for that to happen. Okay, Esther. Esther, you wrote, I get my report card and I show my dad. I got a 94%. Someone else who I feel is my sister got a 65. I tell her it's okay and probably because of a teacher that didn't like her. And waking life, I'm married and not living with my parents. So, and that's again, this is that principle I've been kind of drawing out with a couple of these dreams that you, you get meaning for something when it's different than what goes on in natural life. You, you want to put more meaning on it. I, I use the example a lot of times when I'm teaching about um, dream elements. Like I, I, I often wear blue jeans. You can't see them right now. I'm sitting down, but I, I almost always have blue jeans on. I have blue jeans on right now. In, in a dream, if I'm wearing blue jeans, that doesn't mean anything. That's just what I normally mean. So I'm not going to go to maybe a meaning of blue talking about revelation or prophecy and, and start um, making it mean that. It's just talking about me. Uh, that's normal for me. But if in a dream I was wearing, say, um, red jeans, now that would mean something. That might be talking about the meaning of red because it's unique. It's different. So when you're in this situation and it's like you're from, you know, in a, in a different time period. Right now you're married. You're not living with your parents. But in the dream, your parents are there and you're showing them the report card, which is something that would have happened in a different season in your life. That's a clue that lets you know something about the meaning and, and you want to pay attention to that. So this setting is talking about a time period. So there, there was a time period. Now, in the dream, just the way that you describe the dream, you're not saying that you actually in the dream were younger than you are. So you were most likely your own age. A lot of times you don't even think about that in a dream because it just is. If it, you were younger in the dream, it would have stood out. It would have been obvious and you probably would have said that. So 
because of that, you, you can recognize like you're, you're your age, but you're actually living in another season. And it's saying that this is about something that happened in your past. And this is a pattern in your family. So you've got your dad and your sister that is connected to it. And it basically the pattern is that you've done very well and people around you don't always do as well as you do. And you've tried to make them feel better. That's the basic pattern. Now, it doesn't say whether that's right or whether that's wrong. That's a whole nother issue that you've got to look at because there's there's sometimes when um, that's not what we're supposed to do. And there's other times where that's exactly what we're supposed to do. And the real question is the reasoning why. Uh, but it's showing that you, you've you actually done really well. And there's a lot of favor on your life. And other people maybe not don't have the same level of favor, but you do have favor. So that is, uh, it's, it's a clue. And there's most likely something that's been going on in your life that you've been trying to figure out that this is answering. So uh, a lot of times when we get dreams about previous seasons, it's because it's a root of a pattern. And a lot of times that root, there, there's something that needs to be healed or maybe accepted. Sometimes it's not because it was wrong and we need to change it, but sometimes it's because it's there and we've kind of been ignoring it. And so it's drawing our attention to it. Sometimes it's because our response is not necessarily the right response, and it's giving us a new response. And sometimes it is because there's something that needs to be healed, but something about a past pattern that is being revealed in that. All right, let's see. Cecile, Cecile Sosa, I dreamed that I was well-dressed and I sat in a chair where I was being trained to read the news forecast by a man who was a former newscaster. My boss, however, was female. Um, I mean, do, I wonder, do, do you actually work in the news as, as a newscaster? Um, that, that would change it a little bit because if you actually work in that area, then this might be talking about something going on, a dynamic in, in your actual workplace. But if you're not actually in the news arena, that, that's not actually what you do for a living, it, this is, it's, it's actually more talking about what that would represent. So I, I'm going with the second one because that, that's kind of how it feels to me. If I'm wrong, let me know. Uh, on that feeling, but I'm going to start with the assumption you're not actually in the news. And so the, the whole news is sharing information with other people. So you're being mentored and, and you're being trained and, and you're, you're receiving a, oh, what's the right word? A model, if you will, being taught how to do it. Um, being shown how to do it, being trained how to do it, not necessarily by the person who it has authority over you, but by somebody else that has experience in what you've been called to do. So thinking about this, if this is about a spiritual thing, you know, that there's something that in your life you, you've been called to and the people that have been authority over you um, they're not the ones necessarily that are giving you the specific training in the role. They're still your boss. That, that, so it's not a negative about them in any way. It's just saying that you're going to learn more from others that have already gone forward in what it is that God has called you to. So you've been called to this place. You've been called to a place to convey messages, important information to other people. And the role, um, the model or the picture that you're being given, the training you're being given is coming from someone that's had experience in this specifically, not necessarily the people that are leaders in your life currently. So that I can imagine many ways why that would be very helpful. Let's see. I'm... Um, Thinking Emmy, I'm not sure exactly the right way of saying that, but I, or I'm me. 
<laughs> that could be. I'm me. Um, so you wrote, me and my dad are chased by bad guys. We get to a women's conference and the pastor is Ben Johnson. A black woman puts a foldable staff or cane and I raise it up while speaking in tongues. They pray for me. Puts a foldable staff cane. I'm not sure what where, where did they put it? Did they give it to you? I'm guessing that they gave it to you. Um, so the basic, wh whether or not how that works, here, here's what's going on in this dream. Um, you, you've gone through a season where there's been some stuff going on in your family and the enemy has attacked your family and you've been pursuing freedom or escape from the attack of the enemy. And that's thrown you into... Uh, the, the revival stream, if you will, a place where um, signs and wonders are normal and you've been uh, found yourself in this place and uh, you, you've actually started to see how that helps other people that are in need and your own gifting that you have in that area to see that. So you're raising it up, you're speaking in tongues uh, and so you're you're starting to move in these things yourself, but you're also receiving. Now they're praying for you. So you, you have this kind of thing. So Ben Johnson, you know, talking about the the whole presence revival arena and, and what that means, signs, wonders, healings, that arena that's that's there. Um, women's conference is you're looking actually for 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 yourself and how you can get your own freedom but you end up ministering to others and receiving impartation. Uh, that's, that's fun. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's see. Stephanie. Stephanie, you put this. I was eating with my family and Drake asked to taste my food. I fed him and wiped his mouth with, his, with my towel. This happened twice. So, you know, what Drake specifically means to you, you, you have somebody that is, you know, that there's a level of um, celebrity status. That's what I'm looking for, a level, level of celebrity status, uh, that there's music and that, that connection um, that's there. So eating with your family could be talking about receiving some type of a, of a spiritual nourishment that, that what you're receiving and Drake could represent, uh, not necessarily Drake, but that, um, that arena of people that would be connected to his music that would be maybe even in the entertainment business and the music business, that they're going to see what it is that you've received, what it is that's in your life, and they're going to want some of it. And you're going to be able to serve them while you're helping them to receive spiritual nourishment. So um, it, it's people that, that have a level of influence and specifically what Drake would mean. So talking about entertainment, music, that kind of arena. Um, and, you know, your first thoughts when you think of Drake and, and, and what that would mean, the positive and the negative qualities of that. So people that would be identified with that that are going to notice something in your spiritual life, they're going to want it, and you're going to be able to serve them and help them to receive. And so it happened twice was its confirmation that this is something that is, um, yeah, something that's going to be tangible uh, in your life. Patricia Arneo, Patty, Firestarter, how are you? Hugs back to you. It's good to good to see you on here. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's see. Sarah Garcia. Um, oh, I thought this was a dream, but I hope all of you as dreams and company are well, happy, healthy, and blessed. We are. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Well, I would say something about health. My, my wife actually has something going on with her hand where one of her fingers is swelling up and she's got pain in her hand. So uh, we are praying about that and um, trying to figure that out. So if you think about Donna, pray for her, pray for that to get healed. Um, let's see, Proverbs, you wrote this. On the phone with company, answered question correctly, 
accept app ID numbers. So they reject me, bring up scriptures about edifying conversation and what comes out of the mouth defiles. I'm approved and told given Volkswagen. Okay. Some interesting little pieces, a little bit cryptic. So I'm trying to just kind of bring up the picture in my mind you know, one of the one of the things when you're trying to understand dreams, you're, you're trying to you want to picture the dream, but not just picture what you think about it. So the picture you're actually asking Holy Spirit to help you to picture it because there, there's an atmosphere to revelation. And if you can grab hold of that atmosphere, it's so much easier to understand what it is that it's about. And sometimes you'll actually understand parts of the dream. Um, you'll, you know, I mean, some of these, maybe I've been right and maybe I've been wrong. I, uh, a lot of times, I mean, it can go either way, but I've seen again and again where, you know, questions like I've asked a dreamer, well, it kind of feels like this is not actually, um, what's going on in your waking life. You're, you know, well, yeah, that's exactly, it's not, that's not normal. This is new. Sometimes you'll, you can feel some of that stuff even in the dream while you're doing that. So it's really helpful to ask the Holy Spirit to make the dream alive. You're, you're asking, well, if you spoke this to somebody, would you tell me what you told them? And, and that's just a normal thing you would do in a conversation. You want to find out what the, the communication, hey, so-and-so said that you'd asked them something, but they didn't understand it. Would you, would you explain it to me? That's always an appropriate ask if you have the relationships that, that are revolved. And so you've got a relationship with the Lord. It's always appropriate to ask Holy Spirit, Hey, let me in on this conversation. They're asking me to help them understand what you're saying. And, and, and many times he'll actually do that. So that was, you know, it's one of those little things, little tips that will really help you when you're trying to understand dreams. So phone, phone talks about a wireless communication. So a lot of times that talks about, um, you know, prayer, but sometimes it can talk about distance, uh, a company. Um, you know, some group of people that could be a ministry that might actually be a company. Uh, but what you've got, you're going on where you, you end up uh, having scripture. So it seems like it's more related in the spiritual arena. So that's the direction you want to go there. Um, the app ID number uh, is some type of an identification, but it, it's, it's details, it's information. And so the information might be wrong, but the value system is right. Edifying conversation, what comes out of the mouth. Uh, and so coming back to scripture and that brings the approval. So you're, 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 you're being interviewed, you're being tested, you're, 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 you're being looked at for an opportunity and you may not have the information right, but you have the right value system and keeping protecting what comes out of your mouth and, and doing that because of the values that you've learned in scripture. And because of that, you're going to be given favor that maybe you, you don't have the knowledge to be able to get into that place, but because uh, of that value system on, on scripture and understanding how to protect your speech, it's going to bring you into that place. Now, the idea of a Volkswagen a Volkswagen, it's the people's car. It's something that's common for the people. So it's just saying that you're going to be able to reach people. Maybe you don't have all the information that some other people have and you can't uh, give all the details, but you understand the core concepts of scripture. And because of that, you're going to reach people that others can't. So that is a real encouragement for you. Uh, and I feel like that answers a... Um, something that the enemy has been haunting you with. I'm um, trying to say, because you don't have this knowledge and this knowledge and this knowledge, you're not going to be as effective. And, and the Lord's saying, no, that's not actually how it works. This is what I think about that situation. So very fun. Hey, I want to make sure before I get to another dream, I, I want to make sure I let you guys know if you are interested in growing in dream interpretation We've got a couple things coming up that are really going to help you starting September the 1st. So here in a couple weeks, we're going to be doing module five of Streams Academy. Now, Streams Academy, it, you're able to come in at any module. So even if you've not taken any of the other modules, you can jump in and join us. 
Uh, it's a two month online class with mentoring where you have live Q and A with some of our stream stream team, including myself. And module five is interpreting dreams and visions. We're going to go through all the tools so that you get the tools to interpret dreams. It's, it's the things that I learned when I started doing this myself that I've been practicing for the last couple decades that that's allowed me to be able to interpret some of these dreams. We're going to give you all those tools, give you opportunity to use them and get your questions answered. So that's going to be September and October. It lasts for that whole two months. You're going to have four Q&As in the middle of that with a bunch of teaching, a video of me walking you through the process of dream interpretation. It's really going to help you. So go to streamstraining.com, streamstraining.com, and you will be able to, I'm just going to type that into the comments there. And you'll be able to get on there, get all the details and see if it's something you're able to join us for and register when you're ready to do that and get ready to start September 1st. And if you do that, in even, or if you've already taken our Understanding Dreams and Visions class uh, or taken Module 5 previously in one of the earlier years of Streams Academy, I want to invite you to come to an internship where we're going to be interning people that want to be dream interpreters. So we've already got some people signed up for it. It's going to be October 31st is when it starts. It's that whole week, which is the first week of November. We're going to be here in streams offices. We're going to have people that are coming in. I mean, we've already got people internationally that are planning on coming. We're going to have some other dream interpreters that have been doing dream interpretation and outreaches, training, and myself. And we're going to walk through dream after dream after dream. Everybody that comes will get multiple dreams interpreted. But more importantly, we'll be interpreting other people's dreams and getting feedback on that dream interpretation. It is, it's like an immersion program and it's going to help you grow in dream interpretation probably more than anything else that you can do in a week's time. Uh, you'll get to engage with other dreamers, have lots of conversation. We're, we're going to be spending time in the prayer room here, worshiping, getting into the presence. We'll do prophetic activations. We're, we're going to do Q&A. We're going to be working through dreams and just hanging out with each other over a whole week's time. So I want to invite you. That is on our website. You'll be able to find it on our calendar. If you go to streamsministries.com and, and just scroll through, you'll find it at the end of October, the beginning of November. And we would love for you to come. Now, this is limited in size. So we're, we're only going to be able to fit. I think we're, we're keeping it to 25 people. Um, it is all we're going to be able to let. And we've already used up, I think, six of those spaces. So and we're, we're still a couple months out. So if you want to come, make sure that you get in uh, so that we're able to, to have you be a part of this. But would love for you to come and to be a part of that, because if you're going to learn about dream interpretation, um, that that's going to help you. Now, you can't come unless you've already taken Understanding Dreams and Visions or the Interpreting Dreams and Visions model of Streams Academy, because we're going to be covering stuff. We're, we're going to be putting to use the tools that you get. We're not going to be teaching the tools. We're going to be taking those tools and, and putting them into practice and giving feedback and helping you grow. So it will be, um, yeah, it'll be helpful for those of you that are interested in that. So let's get to a couple more questions here. Katie, looks like you've asked this at least a couple times. Um, what do dreams of breastfeeding a, a baby mean? Are there any scriptural references? So, you know, first, um, I can't think of direct scriptural references. Like I can't think of the exact scriptures, but thinking about how scripture uses that concept uh, could a mother forget the baby feeding at her breast? Neither could I forget you. Like this idea of tender compassion, of nurture, of care, uh, of being given life, being given food, uh, of being close to the heart. These are, these are the concepts that are there. And the idea of the, the milk of the word 
um, the, this place of discipleship that comes out of intimacy with the Lord. Um, so it, it could be talking about you breastfeeding, um, and not literally from the Lord, but this idea of you receiving, or it could be you giving, which would be a discipling, which would be sharing your life, um, sharing your heart with others and giving them those things that you've learned, nurturing something, bringing it to life, sharing what you have to help somebody else grow. So that that would be what it means. So I can't think of, there are some scripture references, but if you take a look and kind of go through some of the ways that it's used metaphorically, that's where I'm getting that concept. And then we're looking at what it actually is and what it does as well. Okay. Let's see, Andrew and Maddie. But my friend had a dream where she had a dream that a girl from church had a brain tumor. In the dream, another friend had that dream, asked the girl's mom about it. She knew about the tumor and didn't want her to know. Okay, so in the dream, somebody from church has a brain tumor. And so she in, in the dream, she has a dream that somebody from her church has a brain tumor. And she has a friend in the dream who also had the same dream. And so they asked the mom of the person and the mom says that she knew about it, but she hadn't told the person because she didn't want her to know. So what, what's a brain tumor? Brain tumor has to do with thought life. It, it's something that is in the thought life, a way of thinking that is um, not good. It's not supposed to be there. Uh, needs to be dealt with. And so there, there's there's something of that. Now, is it about this exact person um, and what do you do with it? That's the that's the really important question. Uh, the question is, is how much relationship does the dreamer have with the girl they dreamt about in the dream? Do they have enough to be able to 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 have a conversation about that, about the way that they're thinking, maybe their thinking thought process, if they didn't have any revelation. So meaning if they'd never had a dream and they notice, wow, they're kind of thinking wrong about some things. I should talk to them about that. And the relationship is strong enough, close enough that they could have a conversation. It's possible, not, not necessary, but it's possible that God could be encouraging them to share that. Now, I would still pray. I mean, obviously, you've got to ask the Lord, but that actually would open up the possibility of maybe I should share this. If that's not the case, and even if it is the case, most likely it's not about sharing it with the person. Most likely this is for intercession, that that there's something about intercession. Now, it may about be about that girl or it may just be about people in the church that have a faulty thinking. So it, it could be about that specific person or the group of people that that girl would represent, which would talk about, you know, people in the church, maybe people that aren't in leadership in the church, mom representing people that are in leadership. Maybe there's some faulty thinking or some ways of doing things that, that are not actually good. Um, and there's revelation that's showing that this, this is there. And so it's a call to intercede. It's a call to pray, you know, take a, you know, asking the Lord to reveal those things, to bring them to the surface that, that they wouldn't be hidden, that the people that need to know would know, and that they would respond to the invitation that the Lord has. And it's also because this person is part of the church. If it's not about that specific individual, if it's about the church, it's always an invitation. Hey, wait a second. I'm part of that church. Where is that in me? And starting to ask that question and paying attention to it. Because when as intercessors, we start to deal with those things in our own life, our prayers have a lot more effect in how um, we're able to deal with things outside of us. So, Hopefully that is helpful and that that'll give you some some thoughts to share with your friend and uh, that they can get um, get somewhere with that. So this is this is a lot of fun. It, it, we've, we've been going for almost 45 minutes now, about 35 minutes, actually. Um, no, nope, 40 minutes. Exactly. 
So I, I'm going to call this a, a good day for today. We will be back. We try to do this every Wednesday when we're when I'm in town. Um, so we will be doing this next week. And we start right around 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, sometimes a few minutes after. Um, and uh, we, we will be there. And hey, if you haven't already checked it out, our Deepening Revelation Conference starts Friday night. So you, you can come virtually, but if you're here in Dallas, we actually still have a few seats that are available. We got Jack Deere, myself, Kim Moss. I was actually one of the reasons why I started today a little bit late as I, I was just busy doing some research and doing some study, getting ready uh, to, to bring a message that the Lord's put in my heart for that time. So would love for you guys to join us. Otherwise, we'll see you next week with our next video. Have an amazing day and keep dreaming. Bless you guys.